Welcome to Virtual Vacations, a Smarter Travel Media Podcast. On this episode, we invite you to close your eyes, leave your bags unpacked, and join us for a leisurely walk through London. Before we go on this virtual vacation, take a minute to relax into your body. Close your eyes and take a few slow, deep breaths. Feel where your feet make contact with the floor, chair, or bed. Relax the muscles in your legs. Let your shoulders drop and your face muscles soften. Take a pause and come into the moment. Let's begin our journey. You're sitting on a wood slat park bench facing the Thames on a pedestrian walkway. It's a chilly spring morning. People are still bundled in trench coats and scarves as they walk briskly along past you. You're comfortably warm, having bundled up too, and the cool air on your face feels refreshing. Out in front of you, the water is a dark, gray-blue, with wind rippling across it, causing it to shimmer in spots. <laughs> Kayakers are out, splashing through as barges putter along, inching paths. Across the water, you see the Palace of Westminster, a broad, stately building capped in jutting towers. The tallest tower, the Victoria, is topped with a flagpole, and the Union Jack is whipping in the wind. You rise from your bench and start walking along the footpath towards Westminster Bridge. Street lamps dot this path, green, wrought iron with globe-shaped lights, each topped with a glinting cross making it look like a royal orb. You walk up a set of broad steps towards Westminster Bridge. This iron bridge is pale green in color, and you spot a copper-colored coat of arms in the corner of the bridge's ornate scrollwork. As you cross the bridge, you are treated to a 360-degree view of the Thames. On your right side, farther up the bank, you can see the futuristic London Eye, the city's giant ferris wheel, rotating gently. You pause at the midway point of the bridge to take in the view. The wind is stronger here, charging across the water in clear bursts and blowing through your hair. You resume your walk. The bridge feels like a runway, leading directly into the city's most iconic site, Big Ben, London's great chiming bell. Once you reach the base of the clock tower, you gaze straight up. From this distance, you can see the white clock face is embellished with gilded webbing something that's almost impossible to capture in photos. Just then, the minute hand hits the 12 o'clock position, and the bells begin to chime. They sound deep and profound, ringing out their hourly song and then punctuating the ending with the baritone gonging of the hour itself. It's now nine o'clock. 
You continue past Big Ben, looping around to the backside of Westminster Abbey. This Gothic Abbey church is punctuated by a sharp, pointed roof line adorned with flying buttresses. Under a stained glass rose window, a triangular awning frames a heavy door. You enter the building. The interior is dark and cool and slightly musty. Your eyes drift up, 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 and they trace the columns that rise to a vaulted ceiling. Your steps echo as you do a circular stroll around the nave. Royal weddings, coronations, and famed burials took place here, and the place has a somber gravity about it. You step into the poet's corner to admire the white marble sculptures and busts of the literary giants that were buried here. After paying your respects, you duck out of Westminster Abbey and blink your eyes to adjust back to the bright daylight. You double back the way that you came, passing a weathered bronze statue of Winston Churchill in a military overcoat. He's looking quite gruff, as if giving a stern stare down to Parliament. You continue along the Victoria Embankment, the street that hugs the west bank of the Thames, as London's black cabs and double-decker buses whoosh by. The road here is lined in trees covered in emerald green leaves. Across the river on your right, you see the London Eye twirling away. Every few steps, you pass another regal street lamp, another park bench. After a few blocks, you come to an enormous white building that resembles a cross between an Ivy League college and a grand hotel. It's marvelously ornate, covered in columned arches on the ground floor and topped with multiple jutting towers. But it's the gardens that really hold your attention. Tucked behind a low black iron fence is a lush green space that stretches a full city block. This is the privy garden of the Palace of Whitehall, a pleasure garden dating back to the Tudors. You step inside the gate, and instantly the whooshing traffic and urban chatter recedes behind a barrier of green bushes and trees. Inside, the garden opens into a long, rectangular lawn ringed by circuitous pathways. It's your own little Eden, full of birdsong. Because you're visiting in the spring, you see the garden in full bloom, with banks of cranberry red, golden yellow, and cerulean blue blossoms. You walk the paths, drinking in all of this color and peaceful splendor, taking in each row of tulips. After a tour of the gardens, you settle into a park bench, feeling the sunshine warm your back as you do another lap through the garden with your gaze. And here, taking stock of your day, is where we'll leave you. Feel free to continue your tour of London in your mind, or to return to your regularly scheduled day. Thanks for traveling with us. We'll see you again next time. Virtual Vacations is a Smarter Travel Media podcast. This episode was written by Maria Hart, executive editor at whattopack.com, and produced by Carol McPherson with executive producer Heath Alva. 
This episode was sponsored by Jet Setter, the stylish traveler's ultimate muse and an insider source for everything you need to live a jet-setting lifestyle. To learn more, visit them online at www.jetsetter.com or find them on YouTube at Jetsetter.